Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1997 action-adventure sequel, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Now, I have a pretty conflicted and contentious relationship with this film. Ever since I first saw it on VHS as a kid, I was not a fan of this movie. In fact, I watched the lenticular cover on the VHS more than I watched the actual movie. There were some things about it that I didn't mind, like I, I had fun with the T-Rex Rampage in San Diego and a few of the other sequences, but it's the one that I turn to the least when it comes to the Jurassic Park films growing up. I definitely watched Jurassic Park 3 more and definitely the first film more. And over the years, I've given it more chances and I will say this, after the most recent viewing, things have improved a little bit. I no longer am that mad at the movie. I don't consider it to be a bad film. I just consider it to be a mediocre, okay movie. A time waster at best. And while that is an improvement, it's still a disappointment, considering it's a follow-up to one of my favorite films in Jurassic Park. Now, The Lost World is directed by Steven Spielberg, who also directed the first movie. And in my opinion, this is one of his weakest directorial outputs. If you didn't know that this was directed by Spielberg going in, I don't think a lot of people would think that this was a Spielberg film. Because there's a lot of things about it that lack his signature style, his signature flair... And you can tell that he just does not have the same passion for this movie that he had with uh, the first film or with other films in his filmography. Even Spielberg admitted like halfway through the production of this movie, he lost his drive. He lost his compassion for this film and he just wondered why he was doing this. What can he really do? He was frustrated with the script and the direction things were going in, and he just felt like he was making something that just wasn't on the same level of the first film, let alone something that's on the same level of quality that he normally adheres to. So this was something that was quite a shock to him. Like, halfway through it, he was just like, I, I, I feel like I'm in a rut. I feel like there's nothing I could do with this movie. I am just going to finish the project. I'm going to finish directing the film. But uh, other than the sequence in San Diego, like, I don't really have much passion for this. And it's very evident. Compare the scenes on uh, Site B with the sequence in San Diego. Like, you can tell that Spielberg has more joy and more passion for that sequence than he did for the scenes in on site B. You could just tell. It feels like a different movie. And I honestly feel this film would have been a bit better if Spielberg did not direct it. I know that sounds crazy considering it's Steven Spielberg we're talking about, but uh emotionless Going through the motion Spielberg is not peak Spielberg. That is not the Spielberg that you want when it comes to directing a film, especially a sequel to Jurassic Park. So I think in retrospect, it would have been a good idea for Universal to wait a little bit longer for Joe Johnston to be available or for maybe another filmmaker to come into the fray, like Frank Marshall, or someone that could come in and bring in their energy to the film. Because I feel another filmmaker, they wouldn't have the same issues. They wouldn't have the same problems with their passion or their level of enthusiasm for the project. Because they would look at it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Where for Spielberg, this is territory he already uh, took part in previously with Jurassic Park. So it wasn't really as special to him as it would have been for another filmmaker. That being said, the direction here, it's not bad. 
it's good. I mean, Spielberg is still a very effective, very strong filmmaker here. The se- the film still looks great. It's got some good uh, sequences that are very effective when it comes to the tension or the suspense or the awe. Uh, it's definitely a film that looks like it has the budget on the screen. The San Diego Rampage is absolutely fantastic. And there are some other sequences on Site B that are also well shot, like the scene with the trailer that's fallen off the cliff, although that scene lasted a little bit too long, but that's not really anything I blame Spielberg for. Uh, There's also a few other moments, like with the two uh, uh, T-Rex dinosaurs, uh, and a few of the other moments of sheer spectacle. But it is a film, though, where... Spielberg's direction is still very below his usual average. So even though the direction is good, it's not great. It's not phenomenal. It's not on the same level. It's like B or B minus level direction. And Spielberg at this time was more known for having his A game. So that's why... I do think the direction is a bit of a tiny, well, not a tiny, it, it is it is a little bit of a negative for me, because you have a unenthusiastic Steven Spielberg behind the camera for a majority of the running time, and it's something that definitely does show. Now, the film is also written by David Coep, Loosely based on uh, the novel by Michael Crichton, The Lost World, which was a sequel to Crichton's novel, Jurassic Park. Co-op at the time got a record amount of money to write this script. And this screenplay does have some positives. I I don't mind the idea of Site B. It it gives you a reason uh, for... Uh, another island of dinosaurs to, to exist. It, it, it also showcases what things might have been like if it wasn't a park, if it was just a island that's got all the flora and the fauna from back in the, the prehistoric age, plus the uh, dinosaurs and everything. And it shows them in their... It shows them in something that's a lot closer to their to their native habitat, without fences, without uh, cages, and so on. So that created a different environment. So it didn't feel like you're just going back to the same park again. Nature is t- has taken over, and that that made things more interesting and and uh, a little bit more scary if you ask me, because of just how, how everything was just overrun with all the plants and, and you just didn't know what was going to come around the corner. And I do like uh, some of the set pieces. The San Diego Rampage of the T-Rex is terrific. The, uh, some of the, the sequence with the trailer and the whole stuff with the baby T-Rex, I like that. I thought that was for the most part well handled except for some of those scenes in that uh, sequence went on a little bit too long I think it could have been trimmed down a bit because it felt like they were in the trailer for too long while it was hanging off a cliff I really feel that they dragged out the tension a bit more than they should have Um, and the stuff with the raptors other than the stupid just lame brain bullshit with the girl kicking a raptor in the face with gymnastics that was dumb that was so idiotic other than that i thought the stuff with the raptors was relatively well handled other than the scene in the field though i i like the idea of the scene in the field where the raptors are in the field and they're hunting people and taking them out one by one but that scene didn't have as much suspense as i feel it should have because Jeff Goldblum and the other main cast members, they got through the field pretty quickly without even encountering much raptors at all. And then a lot of the scene was just a bunch of cannon fodder characters getting eaten by raptors. 
there was no suspense because I didn't know who these people were and I didn't care whether they lived or died. And that ties into an issue that I do have with the script that I want to point out. And the issue is there's too many characters. There's way too many characters in this screenplay. The first film had the right mix of characters and plot and dinosaur action. This has more dinosaur action and more characters. Uh, and I don't necessarily think that was a positive. The more dinosaur action is fine, but the uh, overabundance of characters, not so much. Because you not only have uh, uh, Malcolm and his crew, but you also have the crew of the InGen guy. There's just way too many fucking characters in this movie, to the point where it's hard to really uh, uh, point out who is who, which is which why they're there, what their purpose is, and it just leads to the film becoming a slog at times because there's just so many characters that get stuck in the mud or stuck in the jungle, and it really could have benefited from some serious trimming. And then a lot of the new characters that are added here, they just don't have the same dynamic, they don't have the same charisma and, and just energy uh, that the other characters did in uh, the first film. Even Ian Malcolm, the way that he's written, it seems like he's toned down. Like, you have that one moment where he's like, ah, you know, oh, now there's the wonder and the awe, but then there's the running and the screaming. Like, other than that one bit, he's very restrained here. He's held back, much to the film's detriment. And it's not like Jeff Goldblum at this time was a more mellowed out kind of guy. A year prior, he was in Independence Day. And his character in that was just as lively and just as fun to watch as Ian Malcolm was in Jurassic Park. You could even argue that that character was basically Ian Malcolm. But instead of dealing with dinosaurs, he's fighting aliens. But for some reason... Ian Malcolm is just completely bereft of the the sardonic energy that he had in, in, in Jurassic Park. And Julianne Moore, her character, I just, I, I, you know, I could take or leave her. Sarah Harding, I, I don't think the script did her any favors by having her set up certain ground rules, but then have her break those ground rules in what seems like no time flat. Okay, you set up these certain ground rules that other people should follow about not interacting with your environment, and then as soon as a T-Rex baby gets hurt, grab the T-Rex baby and interact with the environment. It's one of those things, it's like, okay, why even have her say that in the first place? It makes her character look like a hypocrite, and like kind of like a total moron so I don't think that was a, a good setup for her character um Pete Postlewaite as the big game hunter guy he just felt like he was a copy of the other hunter guy in uh, Jurassic Park uh Peter Ludlow who played Hammond's nephew who's the CEO of InGen who's the villain the script did a terrible job with that character uh, the character had no genuine weight to him. Uh, they didn't really feel like this character was much of anything. They didn't really feel like much of a presence. Uh, and they really did not do a good job establishing that character as much of a threat, let alone that much of a force, uh, in the film. Dr. Hammond's in it, and... He tries to redeem himself by preserving Isla Sorna, and they give him a little bit, but he's not in it a lot. I don't know why Tim and Lex weren't in the film more. I don't understand the pro the thought process of having them show up and then having them leave, and then we're stuck with uh, uh, Kelly, who is nowhere near as fun as those two. I, I mean, and, and also, it would make more sense for those two to tag along or be involved in the sequel than some new character. 
Uh, Vince Vaughn's character, Nick Van Owen, it was okay, but it definitely seemed like they were trying to make this guy the comic relief. Peter Stamara's character, Dieter Stark, uh, I, the guy was just a jerk. He was he was a dinosaur abuser, and uh, there's a way too long scene where he's being stalked by dinosaurs, and that was another instance of the script just being way too overindulgent or just not knowing when to cut things, which really did hurt the film's pacing. Um, there's a few other actors and actresses like there's this, the, the Ingen Hunters paleontologist played by Thomas F. Duffy. And uh, there's a few other uh, people here and there, but mainly it's Dr. Malcolm. It's Dr. Harding it's uh, Peter Ludlow, uh, Nick Van Owen, and Kelly, with a few other uh, characters that are that are thrown in there. And I just don't feel a lot of these characters are really that strong, including Ian Malcolm, which is very disappointing, considering how much I, I love that character in Jurassic Park. Like, none of these characters were at all anyone that was like, man, I love that character. The best characters in the Lost World are characters that I was just, eh, I liked okay. And with Ian Malcolm, I probably only liked that character all right because of Jeff Goldblum. And the same thing applies for Julianne Moore. And I, def I definitely didn't care for Kelly. That's another character I did not care for. She felt like she was forced in there. Uh, you can tell the writer didn't have a whole lot of passion for this character or writing for this character. The stuff with her getting involved in using her gymnastics to outsmart the intelligent raptors was just insulting to me as a fan of Jurassic Park and a fan of the raptors, for instance. Um, and I, she was a stowaway and she just got in the way most of the time. Like, I... She felt like she was completely useless more times than not. It's like the only time that she was useful at all is with that moment where she kicks a raptor in the face. Other than that, she's completely useless. So did not need that. Just like we didn't need all these other characters. The multiple paleontologists, Peter Stamare's character, all these other people just did not fucking need them at all. And another issue that I had with the script is the tone. Like, there are times where it's effectively serious and somber and effective and even a little bit uh, intense or, or, or genuinely scary. But then there's other moments where it undermines all that and it's too silly or it, it, it's too over the top. Like, you have this whole scene where they're going through this waterfall and this this paleontologist guy freaks out uh, at a couple snakes. Ah, snakes! Snakes! Ah! And then he gets eaten by a T-Rex. I'm like, this guy's a paleontologist. He's supposed to, like, know what he's talking about, know what the hell he's doing, and be interested or at least aware of the dangers of the dinosaurs that are here on this island and he freaks the fuck out over a couple snakes he doesn't freak out about the t-rexes and all the other dinosaurs that are going on but a couple snakes oh shit snakes it just made the guy look like a, a, a complete and total numbskull and a moron uh but you know that's just me personally. I know some people have pointed out, well, that's the point. It's supposed to be funny because he freaks out about snakes but doesn't freak out about dinosaurs. And it's like, that 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 isn't funny to me anyway. It just it just seemed like an annoying... It was annoying. And and you just ruined that scene. The scene was well, well put together up until that point. Had some nice tension and then, oh, snakes, oh, and then you just ruined it. So... Yeah, there were quite a there were a decent amount of moments like that where things just didn't live up to their full potential. Things were just dragged out too much. Even the climax, even the stuff in San Diego, like yeah, there were some really fun bits, but then there's other moments where it just needed a a, a trim or needed something to be cut or something else going on because it just felt like it was way too long in the tooth.
Now the film also features uh, uh, a decent enough cast. I'm not going to blame Jeff Goldblum for his performance as Dr. Malcolm. He's not the one that decided to have the opening scene of his character in the Jurassic Park sequel be him yawning. I know I've seen a lot of people praise that scene because of the transition, and it is a decent transition, but I don't think that's the best way to open up your Jurassic Park sequel with an established fan favorite character yawning. Like, can you imagine that in any other sequel to any other franchise? The, the first scene you see is of the character, the main character going, ah, ah, ah. you'd be like, uh, uh, okay, that's not a good sign. I guess this film is going to be boring. <laughs> like, like, I, not, yeah, I, I always found that puzzling, very puzzling introduction to uh, Ian Malcolm in uh, uh, The Lost World. So yeah, I, I'm not going to blame Jeff Goldblum. He does the best that he can with what he has. And it's not much. Because for some reason they decide to completely uh, neuter the character for whatever reason. Uh, Joanne Moore, she's also fine too even though she only did this movie to, to pay for a divorce and to work with, with Steven Spielberg. But she's there. She's decent enough. Like I said, a lot of the weaknesses with that character really fall at the screenwriter's feet and don't really have anything to do with her. Uh, Pete Postlewaite, he's all right, as well as the big game hunter guy. Arliss Howard, though, I thought was awful as Peter Ludlow. Uh, it just seemed like he was a miscast. He didn't feel like he was big enough for this film or like he, he couldn't fill the shoes of this character. It was just one of those things where it just felt like the guy was fumbling around, trying to find his footing for the majority of the running time, and he never did. Uh, it's like ha having uh, Bob Balaban play uh, an evil uh, a millionaire. It's just not real. It's not a good casting choice. I know. I think it was Gary Oldman who was initially offered the role, but he couldn't do it because of scheduling conflicts with another film, and that that would have been an improvement for sure because Gary Oldman would have been able to bring a certain sense of gravitas to that performance that this guy just was not even remotely capable of. He was just drowned out by any scene with any other uh, semi-capable uh, actor or bigger name and definitely in, in any of the sequences where he was having to be alongside any of the dinosaurs. Uh, Richard Attenborough... Uh, he was once again solid just wasn't in the film a whole lot just a little bit in the beginning then a little bit at the end I think on like a video recording Vince Vaughn I guess he was cast because Spielberg liked him in Swingers his character's okay but it does seem like he he's the guy who seemingly has the answers for everything and knows how to do almost anything that you could think of he's like Mr. Fix-It Mr. Fix-It Mr. Break into uh, uh, cages, and I don't know. I, I I just didn't really resonate that much with that character. Like he was okay, he was decent, but I didn't think he was as special as the writers thought he was. Um, but that's just me. Uh, Kelly, I, I'm not I'm not gonna blame Vanessa Lee Chester. Although to be honest, her performance is really flat, and her line delivery is even flatter. But I'm not going to be too harsh on her because the character, there really wasn't a whole lot for her to work with. Just like I'm not, I'm not going to blame Vince Vaughn. He did what he was asked to do, be comic relief and be Mr. Fix-It. Okay, all right. I think that character honestly would have stuck with me more if he actually did get killed off at one point. I'm just saying, I, I think it might have been a good idea to have him die or be sacrificed during that scene with the raptors in the field. So then the tension is, is really escalated because now you're like, oh, they took out uh, uh, Nick. But instead, it's a bunch of faceless nobodies. Peter Stamare, he, he, he does what he does best. He plays jerk off douchebag characters. And this is just another one of them. Um... And it was nice to see Joseph Mazzello and Ariana Richards again, and they were in it for like a couple scenes or like one scene. 
would have liked to have seen them in it more. Uh, I know there was a initial like early draft that did have them involved more, but then they decided to go into a different direction for whatever reason. Um, and speaking of the direction of, of, of the script, I got one more thing to add real quick. Apparently David Coep had a note from like a kid who saw Jurassic Park and loved it, but he had some criticism. He talked about how uh, in the sequel, don't have a bunch of boring stuff in the beginning uh, with no dinosaurs. And I, I think that was the wrong approach for David Coop to take. To take the advice of a kid, of all people, and look at a slow burn or a slow build to uh the proceedings in terms of building characters and building the setting as a negative i think that was a really big mistake and that just shows the mindset that co-op had while he was writing this we gotta have more dinosaurs gotta have more characters gotta have more stuff going on and what's crazy is despite all that extra effort to have more the film is more boring the film is less exciting to me. It's less uh, involving consistently than the first film. But that's just my personal opinion. I, I, I this is one of those things where I, 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 I think maybe less was more in, in, in uh, the instance of uh, the first movie compared to Lost World. The film also features some decent enough cinematography by Janusz Kaminski. Uh, it's ed well edited once again by Michael Kahn. The the score by John Williams. Even that's kind of lackluster. I know there's people who have said that it's just as iconic as the first or it's underrated. I respectfully disagree. I don't remember a lot of notes from this score at all. Except for the uh, uh, pieces that were from the first movie. I threw in a lot of bongos and drums, trying to make it sound a little bit more jungle-inspired or make it sound less like uh, the same kind of style from the first film. And as a result, it just kind of sounded more generic to me. Uh, I didn't really have the same wonder or the same majesty as the score did in, in the first film. And it really does feel like every bit of it's 129 minutes. Uh, like I was saying, it's just a film that just there's too much going on. And yeah, you have a Stegosaurus earlier in the movie. They show you the dinosaurs earlier in the film. That doesn't really mean a whole lot if the characters aren't up to the same strengths as the visual effects and the practical effects. I'll give the film all the praise in the world for its practical effects, for its CGI for the time. State of the art, top of the line, amazing stuff. And I, I will say the San Diego Rampage is right up there with some of the best moments in the first film. But everything else is just kind of there for me, or worse. So it's a film that, admittedly, I don't hate anymore. I'm not going to rant on it, but it's still a film that I find to be disappointing, considering the fact that at the end of the day, it's mediocre. It's a meh, so-so sequel to one of the best films out there, in my opinion, in its genre. So, disappointing, but still worth a watch for some of the bigger uh, the sequences, the moments of spectacle. But it's just one of those movies where it could have been a lot better. And, and I, I think could have benefited from maybe another writer in the room. I know Spielberg and co uh, were working on this for years like at least a year conceptually before they actually uh, wound up working together on the finished product. But even though you put all this time into it, it just, it just feels like either they didn't have the right approach or they threw all these ideas at the wall and just thought that they would stick. And a lot of them didn't. Uh, in fact, I think the San Diego sequence that is highly praised, like that was kind of a, last minute thing that they kind of put in there because initially I think the film was supposed to end at the compound with the Raptors and then they thought well that's not a good enough ending that's not that's not exciting enough so we need to add something else because they felt like it wasn't 
something that was big enough in terms of the spectacle. And they were right. I mean, if the film ended there, like it would be cohesive, but it would be even more disappointing and even worse because the film's best standout sequence would not even be in the movie. And you can, and the film's issues and problems would be even more evident. But yeah, that just shows you that they just didn't really have the best plan laid out in the very beginning. And it also showcases the issues that this franchise has. And it points out the fact that maybe they didn't really need more Jurassic Park films. Maybe just one Jurassic Park film was enough. But uh, that's just uh, my personal opinion on the Lost World Jurassic Park. And as always, thanks for watching my review. And I'll see you later. See ya.